Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I want to talk a little bit about a article published by a group of Chinese researchers that claim that they can break 2048-bit, 2048-bit RSA. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to try to <laughs> distill this down for you, explain it to you, and then give you uh, some action items that you can consider. We have known for some time that quantum computing would be able to, to refactor our encryption algorithms based on Lattice. So we've known that for some time. Peter Shore actually published an algorithm back in the mid-1990s showing how this could be done with the use of a quantum computer. So... But at the time, we thought, okay, that's great, but it's going to take millions of qubits uh, in that computer to be able to solve the problem. And so that problem was way off in the future, and we didn't think that it was going to be uh, you know, something immediately that we would need to look at and start addressing. However, uh, the Chinese published their paper, I think it was back in December of 2022, uh, and they described how they could take a 272 qubit uh, quantum computer and uh, complete the operation to refactor an RSA 2048-bit uh, encrypted message. So in a time that would be interesting to humans, their words, not mine. So um, not, they have not said that they can do it. They said that they have done it. They said that they can do it. And we'll talk about it in more. In fact, IBM announced their Osprey-based uh, quantum computer uh, in late 2022. And so, yeah, that's 433 qubits. Also, D-Wave has their Advantage 2, which uses 2,000 qubits. And they're planning for 4,000 qubits later on at the end, toward the end of this year. So it's coming. Yeah, it's, it, there are machines that can do it. However, the Shores algorithm is really based on computers that are using uh, non-noisy qubits, whereas the IBM and the D-Waves are noisy, uh, so meaning that they generate quite a bit of errors. Let's talk about the paper first of all. So... Um, the estimate is that they can break RSA 2048 using a hybrid approach. So they're not, they're not using entirely quantum computing. They're using a mix of classic computing and quantum computing in order to reduce the complexity of Shor's algorithm so that it only needs 372 qubits. Now, what I understand from the article, and i got to tell you the math is over my head too, uh, I'll publish it here for you so that you can look through it. But uh, this is what I have gleaned from it. The, they have, the, the Chinese could not, they didn't have a, a quantum computer with that many bits, qubits to, to test on. So they used a 10-bit, uh, excuse me, a 10-qubit uh, quantum computer and tested on 48-bit messages RSA. And were able to get that to work. And then they are extrapolating that, uh, by scaling up the Shores algorithm that they should be able to do that. So the question is, and the question always has been, will Shores algorithms scale up to handle RSA 2048? That's always been the question that I remember, and a lot of the researchers have uh, talked about that over the years. NIST has been working on this problem for the last six years, trying to come up with an algorithm which is quantum resistant. And that, I think originally they said quantum safe, but you know, risk being what it is, they have renamed it because, yeah, you can't always be sure that what you have today is actually gonna be quantum uh, safe. So they're saying quantum resistant algorithms for encryption that they recently published back in November of 2022. There are four finalists in that list, and they have it divided according to recommendations as to the type of use on how those algorithms might be applied. Now, Michelle Mosca 
published a paper for the IEEE way back in 2018 where he was talking about how quantum computing would render most of our encryption standards obsolete. The paper wasn't quite that worded quite that strongly, but it was more of a, is it feasible, is it possible that that could happen? And the answer, the short answer was yes, absolutely, it is possible. Google went a step further back in 2021. They teamed up with some Swedish researchers and they published a paper trying to estimate the size of a quantum computer that would be needed in order to uh, refactor a, uh, how to factor an RSA 2048-bit message. So, and they came up with an estimate of eight hours, but it required several millions up to, I think there was a range of two million to uh, 10 million qubits in order to be able to accomplish that. So they put, they pushed the estimate of when there would be quantum computers available way out. However, I will tell you that quantum computing has exceeded Moore's law. They, they are way out in front. Now, there's problems. Yes, there's problems. They are developing quantum computing uh, way ahead of any predicted schedule based on Moore's law. So, yeah, <laughs> so they are rapidly, uh, yeah, rapidly creating quantum computers that are have have lots of qubits. Some of the reactions to the Chinese paper. Well, Peter Shore, he's still around. He's on Twitter, and he said on December the twenty seventh, he said uh, there are apparent pro uh, possible problems with this paper, and that's all he said. <laughs> that was it. All he said. I think what he was referring to was that. Now, don't confuse the two. Klaus Peter Schnorr uh, actually wrote a paper on how to re how to reduce the complexity of Schnorr's algorithm in order to shrink the problem size down to fit on smaller quantum computers. But there was a lot of errors in that paper. In fact, I, he retracted it. I noticed that he has corrected it and republished the paper. But I think you know you would have to safely say that's under peer review. So still, so yeah, I I uh, <clears throat> I don't I don't know what the answer is there, other than the fact that yeah, there's there's still some open questions about it. So Scott Anis, uh, uh, Aronson, a computer science and a professor at the University of Texas Austin, who's also the director of quantum informa uh, the Quantum Information Center, said, uh, and his reaction to the paper was, no, just no. Uh, and he went on to say, all told, this is one of the most actively misleading quantum computing papers I've seen in 25 years, and I have seen many. Having said that, this actually isn't the first time I've encountered the strange idea that exponential quantum speedup for factoring integers, which we know about from Shor's algorithm, should somehow rub off onto quantum optimization heuristics that embody none of the actual insights of Shor's algorithm, as if by some sympathetic magic. Michelle Mosca wrote a paper, as I said, back in 2018. He reacted to this back uh, a few days ago, I think, on LinkedIn, and he said he said a couple things. So first, he divided his answer into high level and then a deep, more detailed answer. Uh, and he said, high level, don't panic. Uh, yeah, don't don't proc but don't procrastinate in your migration to a quantum safe cryptography solution. Uh, you should be working on planning a migration to post-quantum public in, uh, key encryption and also be prepared for uh, unexpected breaks that work. So in more detail, uh, Michelle goes on to say, Shor's algorithm breaks today's public key crypto uh, cryptography uh, efficiently. So longer keys are not a viable solution as it requires O to the N fault tolerant qubits to break uh, an N bit RSA key. So basically, you would need over 4,000 fault tolerant logical uh, qubits using the best known methods today to break RSA 2048. Uh, and that was his recent comment. He said, however, 
Bright people are working on new methods that could reduce the requirements to break RSA or ECC. So yeah, don't don't forget about the uh, the ECC algorithm either. So hence we shouldn't be procrastinating and moving along uh, the computer migration to quantum safe cryptography, including replacing RSA and ECC with standardized post quantum algorithms is what he said. Some other reactions, uh, Bruce Schneier said uh, uh, just recently and, and uh, on his blog, he said, a group of Chinese researchers have just published a paper claiming that uh, they can, although they have not done so yet, break 2048-bit RSA encryption. That's something to take seriously. It may not be correct, but it's not obviously wrong either. So, yeah, I mean, on a, and then he goes on to say, honestly, most of the paper is over my head, both from the lattice reduction math and the quantum physics that's involved. But there's a, a nagging question as to why the Chinese government didn't classify this research. But while maybe, yikes or not, <laughs> he goes on to say, uh, I am much less worried that this technique will work now. But this is something that the IBM quantum people can test right now. They have the machine to do it. They should test it. I agree. I mean, you definitely should be trying to, uh, to uh, test it to see whether or not it actually can be done. I mean, it's all great to, put to, you, know, to, uh, you know, to predict that, hey, we don't think this is going to scale, but the proof is if you can do it or not. That's an engineering view on things, by the way. Uh, so I think the best advice comes from Michelle Mosca. This is my own point of view. Don't panic, but don't procrastinate on starting to plan a migration to quantum safe computing. Uh, plan a migration to post-quantum public key and cryptography and be prepared for unexpected breaks that work. <laughs> Is that th there's a couple of things that are in the, let's go back to the Chinese article. So in the conclusion, there's a one-line sentence that says, it should be pointed out that quantum speed up of the algorithm is unclear. Uh, and that's due to the unambiguous convergence of QAQO. Now, QAQO is the algorithm that was developed by Klaus Peter Schnorr that has come under fire, has come under criticism. So just be aware of that. If they are indeed using Schnorr's uh, speed up algorithm, well, there could be problems with that. One of the concerns that Bruce brought up was why hadn't the Chinese government classified this research? So I'm going to point something out that, this, I mean, this could end up being like uh, Bletchley Park. So what was Bletchley Park? Bletchley Park was where the Enigma code was broken uh, way back in 1932. But the world didn't find out about it until the documents were published in 1990s. So, yeah, it took almost 60 years before any of the documents surfaced that explained how they uh, broke the encryption on Enigma. And there are, even to this day, there are documents from Bletchley Park w w that describe the methods used to decrypt Enigma, how they did it, that still remain classified. So, yeah, I mean, if... If it's classified, you're never going to find out about it. You're never going to know if it's been, I mean, if, if somebody were to come up with a way to crack RSA 2048 and they classify it, you're not going to find out about it. I'm not going to find out about it. The real question is, can we test it? And the answer is, yes, we could test it. We have the, there are machines, although they are noisy and are air prone, it is possible that we might be able to get a test that would run but only the IBM people and the D-Wave people could answer that question. So, I mean, that's all I had for today. Uh, <laughs> sorry for the doom and gloom. But, uh, yeah, I think, I think this, this topic uh, will unfold more. And as it does, I'll come back and I'll add updates to it as I find out more about it. But, uh, yeah, I think, I think clearly the answer here is don't panic. But start looking toward looking at the migration strategies. I'm going to include the links to the uh, to the paper and also to some of the reactions that other people have had to it 
Also, I will include the uh, documents for both the CISA and what their recommendations are. Uh, also put in uh, re recommendations that the NIST has. Uh, there is a book by Roger Grimes which talks about uh, the future uh, and what cryptography will look like under with quantum uh, computing based uh, com uh, machines in our uh, in our everyday lives and they are definitely here they're definitely being used anyway that's all I had hope you enjoyed this video if you did please like and subscribe hope to see y'all again real soon bye for now <laughs>